Hey, September 9th. Back at it, elk hunting after six day hiatus. Drove straight from Wyoming, uh, Nevada, skipped Wyoming, took my wife to surgery, been with her the last five days doing laundry, cooking dinners, cleaning, all her honeydews, taking care of her. She's gracious enough to allow me to hunt close to home, so I'm at my uh, Idaho hunting cabin. It's a house, I'm spoiled, I understand that. Today's mission is to get packed, unloaded, get to that pump house right there, start cutting up some elk steaks from that uh, Nevada bowl. Sorry, Ryan and my friends in Wyoming, I couldn't make it. My wife was not comfortable with me being 15 hours away from home. Now I'm only an hour and a half. If she needs anything, I can drop what I'm doing and take care of her. And uh, I'm gonna hunt for a few days and head home and check in on her. And that's how it's gonna be the rest of the month. Just went and bought an Idaho tag. I had no intention of hunting here this year, but I do have a big bull that I tried to kill last year. I hope he's alive. We're gonna go right to him and see if we can find him. We're gonna go glass for him tonight. But right now it's unload. Watch the Seahawks game and cut up meat. That's the game plan. Let's do it. I pulled the skull cap off. It's soaking in bleach right now. Gonna get unloaded. See if we can get another one. Welcome to the cabin. Here's some of the sheds we've kept. I've sold most of them. That right there is a 350 bull from Idaho. That right there is a first bull with a bow in 2005. That's a six point bull I called him for my dad in 2009. That is a 311 bull, public land shot four or five miles from the cabin. Herd bull, hunted him three years. This is seven by seven I shot in late October in Idaho with the bow. This is a, a Washington draw tag in the blues. This is a 330 bull. Uh, see, this five point right here is the four, first bull I ever killed with a rifle in 2001. This is a 7x7 seven seven that I killed in Idaho in 2009. This is my dad's 320 bull. He killed in Montana at 70 yards. Up there is a New Mexico bull I killed in 2007. Um, this is a Wyoming pronghorn I shot in November on a leftover tag archery. This is a Montana pronghorn I killed archery. It's a North Slope Alaska caribou. This is my back, my dad's 2009 Idaho moose. It's my dad's 2006 caribou. And then we have the, all the bulls. Um, the big one over there is an Arizona bull. And then all the satellite bulls I've killed. I think we're sitting at about 23 elk in the cabin. Just with I've killed and then part of my dad's five. So we're trying to get close to 30. Hello? Welcome to logging country, and I'm pro logging. There's so much timber here, with all the fire danger. Makes money, it's revenue, helps the forest out, and I'm all about it, but behind me, see how there's no logging behind me? It's the only stretch of national forest they can't touch. And even though it's right by logging, it's where some of the bigger bulls hang, so I'm gonna spend little evening on September 9th, doing a little glassing, listening for bugles. That's the simple plan. I'm not going to be here late, just get back in time for dinner, get my pack ready for the morning, and get a game plan. This is not where I wanted to be, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Welcome to the 2018 Hustle is My Love Language video series, appropriately named because that is a fact about me. If you're somebody who works hard and hustles, you are speaking my love language. And I just wanted to do a quick YouTube video series, just kind of day by day of my Idaho hunts. We're going to drop the Nevada hunt. Uh, that's going to be a collaboration with my buddy Jacob Villasenor. That's going to take some time. He filmed that with 4K, 10 days. We have hours upon hours of editing, but I'm going to bust out the elk hunt in Idaho, give you a quick little background, try to do one of these at the end of the video and just kind of explain, because I don't have a videographer in Idaho, it's just me hunting solo for the most part, and uh, I think 
you'll appreciate kind of my style of elk hunting and also keep in mind that this year was different I had no intentions of being in Idaho uh, at all I didn't even buy a tag I had drawn a Nevada tag that took 12 years to get and then I had drawn a Wyoming tag that took 12 years to get and then um, towards the end of my Nevada hunt uh, I actually didn't get very good cell phone service my wife had a crazy accident at home with a power tool she almost cut off all four of her five fingers on her left hand and had to get rushed to the emergency room for stitches and then had to uh, meet with a surgeon and have surgery scheduled and we didn't have health insurance on either one of us because we're dumb and she didn't want to tell me because she knew that I would probably stop hunting and come home and she knew I was 15 hours away and headed to Wyoming right after the Nevada hunt. So I actually got the text from my dad in Nevada that, hey son, I have some bad news. You should probably plan on finishing your hunt today and call home right away. When you get that kind of text, it totally ruins your hunt whether you're going to stay or not. Like you have a pit in your stomach. So I eventually got a hold of my wife, found out she had surgery coming up in two days. So I told her I'd finish the next day and come home. And that's what we did. And we'll get to that story later. But this was September 9th. I had uh, been home for several days now from Nevada. I killed my Nevada bull on September 3rd, and I was home on September 4th, and she had surgery on September 5th, and then September 6th, 7th, 8th, uh, and part of the 9th, I stayed home and did laundry, dishes, cleaned the house, took care of the kids, changed diapers, uh, painted the outside of the house, I did everything, cleaned the gym, I just caught up on emails, did payroll, all that kind of stuff it wasn't elk hunting and then she was cool with me hunting about an hour and a half from our house in North Idaho so I went and bought an over-the-counter tag and this video was just me kind of getting to the cabin and getting things situated I had an entire elk that had been hanging I uh, had my dad take the elk meat that I brought home from Nevada to our pump house where we have a, a cool bot and we can basically hang meat and I like to hang meat for seven to ten days and so I'm, I'm sitting there butchering meat the first few days of my hunt and uh, I had permission to hunt kind of like three or four days at a time and then come home for two or three days and help out and that's kind of what we're going to see for the rest of September so want to bring you guys along hopefully you enjoyed the series make sure that you subscribe and uh, just know that I do all this for you guys so you can see kind of what it's like to hunt with me and uh, over-the-counter public land